Hello and welcome. Well, guys, you're probably wondering, okay, she seems to be wearing the same outfit that she was just wearing in a previous video. Well, I hope you guys don't mind, but I am filming today YSL Libre, right? The new one of Flowers and Flames. And then I'm also now filming for you the latest from Burberry, which is Burberry Goddess Intense. And I just felt, you know what? Why do I have to go change outfits? I mean, is it a requirement that I have to have a different outfit for every video? So I'm just going to go ahead and keep this outfit because it's very hot today. This is a one shoulder summer dress and I'm very comfy. So I'm just going to go ahead and share this info with you. So I hope you don't mind. But anyway, guys, so today it is all about Burberry Goddess Intense. And guys, I have so much to say about this fragrance. So I hope you are ready. As always, I am going to be giving you a detailed review. I have had the opportunity to use this fragrance three times and I am ready to give you all of the juicy details because we need to talk about this fragrance. And in addition to that, of course, I am going to do a detailed comparison to the OG, which is Burberry Goddess. But um, yeah, we definitely need to talk about this fragrance. But before we jump right in, if this is your first time here, I'm Arahi and I'm your fragrance concierge because I'm totally committed to creating the best fragrance experience for you. I upload videos four to five times a week and sometimes you even get a bonus video. In this channel, we discuss all types of fragrances all the way from Western niche to Middle Eastern to designer to affordable, all types of fragrances. So if that's the type of content that you're interested in and it sounds like a good plan, then please consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget, leave a comment. Let's go. All right, guys. So let, let's just, let me just start how I always start before I jump right in, right? So this fragrance, if I had to give it a phrase, so I gave, I don't know which one of these two videos I'm gonna upload first, but if this is the second one, then you notice that when I did the YSL Libre uh, Flowers and Flames, I gave it a phrase of modern sophistication. Well, this one, this one, I would give it the phrase vanilla sophistication. And let me explain myself. So typically a vanilla fragrance, at least in my opinion, evokes a, a feel of like warmth, of uh, casual. It doesn't mean that the, that the fragrance cannot be worn on formal occasions. No, there's just a feel to a vanilla fragrance. But what I feel that has been done in not just this one, but in the OG is they've taken, Burberry has taken vanilla down a very different road than what we're used to because they have brought elegance and sophistication to a vanilla fragrance and they have done it exquisitely. Now, let me start by saying a couple of things about this fragrance. And please remember that this is just my opinion, okay? This is just my opinion. So this fragrance has an opening, guys, that is an extreme challenge. I don't care how much you've trained your nose, how many lavender fragrances you love and you've tried, this opening has got to be maybe the most challenging opening of any fragrance that I've ever sniffed. Because when I first sniffed this fragrance, I was like, oh no, oh no, 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 this is not, this is not for me. But then something happened and I'm going to stop there because I don't wanna give away everything else that I have to say during the review. But I'm gonna tell you right now, if you are not, if you are one of those people that really does not like lavender at all, this fragrance is not for you. Is this fragrance lavender centric? In the opening, it is only about lavender. But as you progress in the olfactory journey, there's other things that will come along, which I'm gonna share with you in a minute. And at the dry down, you're going to get and I'll share that with you in a minute. But I am telling you guys, I am telling you, if you do not like the note of lavender, this fragrance, I'm gonna repeat it again, is not for you because the opening, I have never had such a screechy 
opening. And look, I'm taking all this time to repeat it again, that the opening here is quite challenging. So if you've been with me for a while, I'm sure that you've heard me talk to you a couple of, of times about my feelings about lavender. Uh, for me in the past, picking up a fragrance with the note of lavender was like a no. Not because I did not like lavender, but to me, lavender was about like, I'm gonna go take a bath. I have my lavender bath salts, uh, preferably from Dr. Scholl's because they really relax me. I've had a long work day, so I'm gonna jump in my bath with my lavender bath salts. That's really what lavender was to me. But as time has evolved, there's been new fragrances that have made it out that have the note of lavender and have been done exquisitely. And I've shared with you quite a number of them here on the channel, and I absolutely love them. And this one is no exception. And of course, Libre is not an exception at all. Absolutely love it, right? So yeah, but when I tell you that this lavender is a lavender that will require some commitment to loving Burberry Goddess, I am telling you. In the intense, that opening is exclusively about lavender. There is nothing else happening, and the opening, the, the, the lavender in the opening is so, so strong and so, so, so intense that it is screechy. It's almost like if, I don't know if they did it on purpose, guys. I, I, I really don't think that they would do that on purpose. Maybe it was a blend mistake. I don't know. But what I can tell you is that the opening, there's nothing smooth about the opening. There's nothing, in my opinion, and I just have to be honest, there's nothing pleasant about the opening unless you are an avid fan of lavender. Even if you love lavender, like I do now, even if you like lavender, you are going to find this opening a tad obnoxious because it is just too much. Okay, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, so let's go ahead and start by reviewing the latest. And this is Burberry Goddess Intense. And let me just start by saying, guys, that if you compare it, so this is the OG, and the only way that I can tell between my two bottles is because this one, as you, as you can see, has quite a dent in it because I love it. And this one already has a bit of a dent, and I'll tell you more about it. Um, but that's the only way that I've been able to uh, have a difference between both of them. Even though supposedly, you know, the Goddess Intense is supposed to be, the juice is supposed to be a tad darker than the OG. I, I just really don't see much of a difference. Um, but yeah, I can tell you that the bottles say exactly the same. By the way, guys, I did do an unboxing. There is a short dedicated to the unboxing of Burberry Goddess Intense. So if you want to see all the details of the bottle, I have close-ups and you can go check it out. Um, but the bottles are pretty much exactly the same. The only difference is that at the bottom of the bottle, one will say uh, Elle de Parfum and the other one will say Goddess Intense. All right, so before we jump right in, let's take a look at the notes of Burberry Goddess Intense. Burberry Goddess Intense was launched in 2024. It was launched maybe about a week ago and I ordered it directly from Burberry and I paid for overnight shipping because I really wanted to get my hands on it because I absolutely love the OG. And I had taken a look already at the notes of this fragrance and when I read the middle notes, I just could not believe it because I just shared with you the notes, but in case you missed it, let me just bring this to your attention. So here are the middle notes of this fragrance. Vanilla, Vanilla Absolute, Bourbon Vanilla, and Vanilla Caviar. So if you are a vanilla lover, there is no way that you're going to skip this fragrance. Get yourself a sample, get yourself a decant, because I'm telling you there are challenges around this fragrance, but it is just a delight. So let me tell you, so this fragrance opens... Whew, Guys, as soon as you sniff the bottle, like if you've already sprayed it because you've used it or because you tried it, you know, when you first picked it up and you just remove the cap, you are going to be hit immediately with the strongest note of lavender ever. And this lavender smells so real and is so intense and is so potent. It's just like it is a lavender bomb in the opening, but like a minute 
after that, if that, you're going to start to pick up on the vanilla immediately. And once you start to pick up on the vanilla, the vanilla comes in smooth and it intensifies. And by the time you reach the dry down, guys, you've gone through an olfactory journey of just vanillas. Vanillas in so many different facets, just done beautifully and exquisitely. And then as you approach the dry down, you are going to get like a bit of woodiness and some creaminess, which is coming really from the patchouli. The patchouli does make an appearance, but the vanilla says, move over patchouli, it's not about you, it's all about me, and takes over again. And at the dry down, you are going to get a beautiful, beautiful vanilla balm that has in the background a very nice and smooth lavender and some patchouli. Do you have to be a patchouli lover? For those of you that are not into patchouli, please do not concern yourself because the patchouli is not the star of this fragrance. The star of this fragrance really at the dry down and throughout the olfactory journey, except for the opening, is the vanilla. This fragrance is all about the vanilla. And in my opinion, and you know, you know, I'm going to talk about these differences, you know, in more detail in a minute. In my opinion, what they've done in Burberry Goddess Intense is take the DNA of the OG, but amplified two notes, lavender and vanilla. Lavender only in the opening and the vanilla all throughout the journey and the wear of the fragrance. And they have really amplified it like to a bit exponential factor type of amplified right so it's not just a little bit more vanilla it's not make the vanilla more present no 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 it's a vanilla bomb and you're getting all of the vanillas that they have mentioned in the notes you are going to pick up in the olfactory journey and at the dry down i'm telling you it's a vanilla bomb so let me tell you a couple more things about burberry goddess intense before i jump into the comparison so this fragrance has absolutely no oud and i think it really is best suited for 25 plus i really don't see someone in their late teens or in their very early 20s really pulling this off not that it requires any level of real maturity in my opinion there's just something i don't know very central about this fragrance this is really an exquisite fragrance guys um so but i would say 25 plus this is also a fragrance that you can pull off even though it has all of that vanilla the vanilla is not cloying so you can pull it off in any season of the year day or night for any occasion that best suits you this is also a fragrance that i consider to be it is unisex but it leans heavy to the feminine side, in my opinion. Uh, do I see a man wearing this? Because I'm sure someone will ask me in the comments section. You need to wear whatever makes you happy. That's just my opinion. But honestly, this is a unisex with a heavy lean to the feminine side, at least to my nose. This is also a fragrance that gives me very good performance. It does give me a full day wear. Is it a beast on my skin? It is not a beast, but it does give me a full day wear and it gives me a very strong projection during the first 90 minutes. Then for an additional hour, sometimes maybe an hour and a half, it does become a scent bubble. And then after that, it just goes straight into a skin scent. And the skin scent is one that others will pick up on because the sillage of this fragrance is incredible. You are going to get compliments. This is a high, high compliment fragrance for sure. All right, so when we compare um, Burberry uh, Goddess, the OG, and the new Burberry Goddess Intense, I can tell you that there are differences in the opening. So when it comes to the OG, you are going to find that the opening is all about the lavender and the vanilla coming together and giving you a very fresh opening. Does it open like a freshy fragrance? No, it's just that the opening is like a, let's call it a diluted vanilla and lavender type of effect. And that's what you're getting in the opening of the OG versus the opening that you get in the intense, which I already told you, the opening is all about the lavender note. And the lavender note is very, very sharp. It is very, very intense, very, very strong. 
that's what you're going to get in the opening. Now, when it comes to the midway of the olfactory journey, the journey of the OG is one that I prefer in all honesty than the intense. Is it that I don't like the intense? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that the olfactory journey of the OG is really in my opinion exquisite right so midway in the olfactory journey after after that opening that i just described you are going to start to pick up on the note of cacao and the cacao to me brings a kind of like character to the fragrance immediately and you're also going to pick up on some ginger and the ginger because of that fresh opening the ginger brings a bit of fresh spiciness at least to my nose to the fragrance but midway in the olfactory journey you are going to pick up on the ginger the cacao and the vanilla has come in and has intensified a bit more is it a very intense vanilla in midway through the olfactory journey in the OG no it's just a very present vanilla now when it comes to the intense version midway in the olfactory journey guys we already have several vanillas kicking in and the vanilla has intensified and has taken over beyond a shadow of a doubt midway in the olfactory journey you know that this fragrance is about the vanilla and you also understand that when they listed those four or five vanilla types you are definitely getting a vanilla bomb so then at the dry down in the OG, you are going to get a vanilla centric dry down, but there is a slight like aromatic quality to that dry down and you are definitely going to pick up on a very nicely done and smooth lavender that plays very, very well with the vanilla. The dry down of the OG guys is just absolutely beautiful and the wear of the fragrance is just exquisite then in the intense you are going to have a true vanilla dry down it is all about the vanilla at the dry down and there is a bit of woodiness in the background that brings character to the fragrance because if not it would just be like a sweet vanilla fragrance but you are going to get quite a bit of character there's also a very similar vibe to both of these fragrances at the dry down even though the intense has much more vanilla and has a very vanilla centric dry down there is definitely a very very similar vibe are they exactly the same at the dry down no they are not because let's just talk about it to me these two fragrances are not the same guys do they have the exact same dna absolutely do they give you a very similar vibe throughout the olfactory journey and throughout the wear absolutely well you know that it's burberry goddess most likely if you really know the burberry goddess dna you're going to pick up at the dry down that you know you're wearing or that person is wearing uh, burberry goddess whether it's the og or the intense but at the end of the day is the intense redundant in your collection if you have the og i have to be honest with you i just don't think that there's so much of a difference at the dry down that it necessarily warrants or justify you picking up the intense the intense does exactly what what, what what the name says it has intensified without a shadow of a doubt the note of lavender but not throughout the olfactory journey just at the opening it has certainly intensified the vanilla in the olfactory journey at the dry down and throughout the entire wear of the fragrance that is what the burberry goddess intense is about it's about intensifying those two notes that's really what they've done but at the end of the day at the dry down you are going to get much more vanilla to my nose with the intense than you are going to get with the og it's really up to you if you feel that you know if you are a heavy vanilla lover and you also love burberry goddess then you are going to be super happy to pick it up. Now, what I will tell you is that one thing that I've been loving is layering both of them. It is just incredible because the amount of vanilla and lavender that you get in the intense combined with the very balanced and smoothly done uh, OG, it just works beautifully. So if you have both, try layering them and let me know. Try layering them on skin. All right, guys, so I can tell you that I really do 
uh, enjoy this intense version. I really do, but I still do prefer the OG because it's a very well-rounded fragrance that doesn't have any screechy notes. It is an impeccably done blend in my opinion, and it wears the same way, but I do enjoy how they have amplified the vanilla in the intense. Um, I just really do prefer still the OG. So while the OG is smooth, I just find that the Intense is radical in being what it was designed to do, which is be intense, right? And I'm not sure that I'm always up for that. But all in all, guys, I think that this is a lovely fragrance. I think that if you understand what you're getting yourself into, you're going to enjoy it. And I definitely do recommend it. And I do give this fragrance a 7.5 out of 10. All right, guys, so we've reached the end of today's video. And as always, I hope that this was valuable for you and I was able to give you all the information you need in case you were looking or considering picking up the new Burberry Goddess Intense. As always, thank you so much for hanging with me today and I will see you in the next video.